Good morning. Welcome to Adventures in Small Business, a collaborative effort by the U.S. Small Business Administration Hawaii District Office, the Hawaii Small Business Development Center, the Mink Center for Business and Leadership, and the Veterans Business Outreach Center of the Pacific to showcase the stories of local entrepreneurs and small businesses in Hawaii. I'm Colleen McAlooney from the Patsy T. Mink Center for Business and Leadership, and today we have Adrian Tam from Bowtown visiting. Morning. Hello. Hi. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So can you tell us a little bit about Bowtown? So Bowtown started about maybe three years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, it was actually a concept that I was doing, but my son is the one that was pushing me to do it. Um, I was actually working at a job, uh, which I was at seven years. Mm -hmm. I guess kind of, I guess I felt kind of like, oh, what is next? What is next? What adventure next? Right. So, uh, you know, we tried this out and mm -hmm. then never looked back three years later and I'm here. Oh, excellent. Yeah. That's always, it's always a huge endeavor to start your own business. Was that yeah. something that you've been thinking about, had been thinking about prior? Yeah, because my grandma is also one of the, our matriarchs, and she started a bunch of businesses oh. uh, back in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. even a shoe shop. So oh. I was like, oh, why not? If it's in the family, right? If right. in the family, try something. Right. And has your family always been in food? Uh, food and uh, shoes. Oh, food and shoes. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. But those were different times now. I guess it's a little bit more difficult now. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. And so, uh, so your son was your, mo your motivational yeah, factor to get your business started? Yeah, pretty much he was the one started? that got me, you know, kickstarted me to be like, oh, why don't you try something, you know? Uh-huh. So. Is that because he liked it so much or he thought other people would yeah, like what because, you were making? Yeah, uh, because before I went out and ventured out, I was also running a bar. Oh. And I had that in my bar. Mm-hmm. And he was like, well, why don't you just try to see what happened? And then uh, you know, these pop-ups started coming out. Mm -hmm. And then my son was like, oh, why don't you just try see what happens? So I was like, all right. Oh, excellent. I'll just try see what happens. So tell us a little bit about what you make at Bowtown. So what it is is um, it's a Chinese steamed bun. That's basically what it is. Like if you had the duck in before mm -hmm. from the Chinese restaurant. So same concept, but we, I do different. Like I do savory or I do sweet. But I put all kind of all kind of um, ingredients inside, not just your normal uh, that you see at a Chinese, uh, you know, restaurant mm -hmm. with the duck skin and everything like that. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Um, in my Yelp, there's a bunch of other pictures. Oh, okay. That you can see if you scroll down that I, I did a bunch with uh, quail egg. Oh. Yeah. With uh, beef tongue, soft shell crab. Oh, very yeah. diverse. Yeah, just because, you know, the... the the bun is just like a bun. If you were to, if you were to cook it instead of steam it or bake it, mm -hmm. it's just like a burger bun. So oh, it's just okay. a different texture, different taste. Right. Yeah. And light. Correct. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's fantastic. We're going to see some pictures uh, in a little bit sure. of some of the food that you offer. Sure. Oh, that's terrific. So you've been doing it for three years. Correct. And let's see. So was it difficult for you to get started as an entrepreneur? Um, you know... Once I started to get like get the ball rolling, mm -hmm. uh, it was kind of easy after that, uh, you know. But for me, sometimes I'm I'm all over the place, mm -hmm. so I needed to really buckle down and get organized. So I had to keep things in folders, write it down, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. So I just had to keep like a log. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so. it's it's interesting. The the more entrepreneurs that I meet, the more I see how creative they are. Yeah. And how. Almost every entrepreneur that I've met has multiple ideas. Yes. And so it's really difficult to get them to focus in I on think that's, one idea. Yeah. Was that your challenge? Yeah. It just staying uh, focused and making sure I, I just knock down one barrier after the other instead of just jumping and jumping. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I do, I carry on too many things. Right. So that's, that's like a distraction, you know? Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. And so what are some of the challenges that you face then in opening um, your business? So the number one challenge I face is employees. Mm. Um, Staffing. Correct. So a lot of times, well, I had two issues. Oh, okay. Uh, one time, you know, I asked somebody to work and they agreed to work. Uh, see, my motto is if you don't want to work or you have other things or you decide you change your mind, mm -hmm. just let me know ahead of time. I can always try to find somebody mm -hmm. or I get my mind ready that I'm not going to have this extra person and I got to do more, you know? You have to do more work. Right. Yeah, right. so get myself ready for that. Um, so it was kind of funny, you know? I mean, I had a story. One guy called me saying that he broke his arm and he was in the hospital. So um, 
I, I don't know if I should say my story or back to that with that. Oh, yeah. Okay, so what happened was um, when he told me that, I was like, oh, and you stayed in the hospital the whole day, the whole night. And I was like, you know, I got bit in the face by a dog. And they just stitched me up, stitched my, up, stitched my <laughs> nose up. And after three hours, I was out of there. So when he told me he broke his arm and he was, you know, in the hospital the whole night, I was just like, oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, you could at least just say you change your mind or come up with a better story. But, right. So I think number one for me is finding the right employees for what I do. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I guess what I do setup-wise, is it's not traditional where you can just get in there and then you just, you know, you work, you have to set up. You've got to open a tent, you know, set your area up. Right. But when, when you do set it up, it's like a kitchen. It's like, because I've been working in a um, hotel industry for a long time as well. Mm -hmm. So I mirror certain things that I've learned, you know? Right. Like even with the ticketing, it, it, it's just like if you were looking at a, like if you're in a restaurant, it's right ahead of you and if it, and you have your dish out, your everything. It's the same. Oh, okay. Yeah, but just I think the tough part for some people is just the setting up. Oh, okay. And so you've learned, so your, your um, history and experience is in a uh, hotel yeah. food industry. Food industry. For, yeah. So about 20 years or, uh, so, so far now. Mm -hmm. So I've learned from all sorts of people, you know, uh, all sorts of mom and pop stuff too. So right. There's a lot of tricks in the trades. You learn a bunch of stuff, you know. Mm hmm it was good you know i've never i was never uh, i guess you called it uh schooled i didn't right. go to school for it mm -hmm. i just learned on the job oh, fantastic so, yeah that's great and so other than staffing are there what are any other um, challenges for you as an entrepreneur i would say i guess when you work with family too mm. everybody has an input yeah yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's hard because you like it's like it's your baby, but yes. other people are telling you how to run your baby. Ah, so. okay. So family, yeah. you, get, you get family to help you then every once yeah, in a while. So, yeah, but you know, I, I don't know where I'd be without my family helping me. So, oh, yeah. I'm always appreciative, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, it's just hard to hear some things sometimes. Right. But that goes with the territory, you know. Right. Out right. of love, yeah. 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 And so how many, do you, how many people do you usually staff at an event? Um, so I have about... Five total, mm -hmm. one cashier, one to just do the buns, mm -hmm. steam the buns, because the buns just uh, constantly need to be replenished, steamed again, replenished, because it's just the volume that we do. Right. And then uh, two guys on the line, and then me cooking. Mm -hmm. So I can control everything while I'm cooking, and then I can hop over and help the guy on the line. So that's, that's the formula I figured out so far oh, with, with trial and error and everything like that. Right. Even um, when I first started, we had about 10 menu items, mm -hmm. and that was just killing everybody. Yeah. But for me, I was just always like, man, I want to do the same thing every event, same thing. So I had to learn to kind of just do a couple items well, mm -hmm. very well, mm -hmm. that were sellers, and then just, you know, just modify as I go and just add. Ah. Yeah. So we do three items, um, but uh, right now it's the Tam Tam, which is pork belly, mm -hmm. and then the other one is the chicken KFC, and then uh, I do this lobster tot with mac and cheese. Ooh. Yeah, so, you know, uh, so those are the three items that uh, I do consistently, mm -hmm. because also because of the load and the handling of, some people can't do too much, right. so I just gotta do what I can with right. the staffing I have, and I notice that with, those three items are enough, ah. and it's still good enough to, you know, for us to have a good night. Yeah, so if you've perfected uh, three wonderful items, yeah. you must see repeat customers then. Yeah. Are, since sometimes you're not we, available every day at a brick and mortar correct. or yeah. at a specific location, then people correct. are following you. So my dad, uh, he would laugh because he was like, yeah, he would tell me that, oh, this person came back again and again. So oh, great. sometimes you have repeat customers that same night, mm -hmm. you know, and then they really like it. They enjoy it. Right. You know? And then some people, they don't know what it is and they're hesitant. But then once they try it, they're like, wow, you know, how go good it was. More of that. Yeah. And they come back. So, you know, I feel really, you know, like happy in a way that, you know, it's actually doing well, you know. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Oh, that's that's a huge success yeah, when so you get someone good, coming back. feeling, you know, when you. Mm. doing something it's actually working you know yes yeah well, and they're willing to stand in line again yeah usually <laughs> the it's lines are crazy sometimes like um they can be yeah if if you actually went on my uh facebook page mm -hmm. uh you see uh when we did the salt building maybe i think that was like a year and a half ago the line went 
all the way out towards oh. the corridor. So uh, my dad was just laughing when he took the pictures. He went on the top. <laughs> <laughs> so it made him giggle, made him happy, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. And so um, what about uh, competition for you? Who do you see as your competitor? Uh, right now, I'm the only one doing it. Mm -hmm. um, before there was somebody, and I didn't mind. Yeah. Um, I, I like competition. You know, it gives variety, yeah? Yes. You know, and it gives you that you want to, like, see what they're doing compared to what you're doing, mm -hmm. how successful it is, right. well, you know, what, what are they doing better than you, you know, how, how can you improve? So it's, it's always good. Competition to me is good. It's not something I, I'm afraid of or shy away from. And so uh, what about your business makes you unique then? Um, I guess right now I would say... Uh, I've taken the, that bao, the traditional style Chinese bao, mm -hmm. and incorporate um, fusion, anything, Asian, Chinese, Italian. So sometimes before, Eat the Streets used to do, oh, I used to do Eat the Streets. So mm -hmm. um, they would do themes, oh, okay. like uh, if a Mexican night or you know, whatever country, and you have to do like, um, you know, like they did a German one, you know, when they had the German... Uh, like Oktoberfest or something? Oh, correct. When okay. they had it at Bishop Museum. I, so I did, what I did, what I did like a chicken schnitzel. Oh. But in a bowl. Mm -hmm. And then I also did like, a, I did the, the sausage. Oh, right. Yeah, I did that one too. So there's a lot of pictures up on the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see it on my Yelp or you can see it on my um, Facebook or my, my, um, Instagram. Instagram, correct, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's very, it's unique in that you can tailor it to yeah, a you lot can, of many correct. different I mean, types of Basically, it's food. like I said, it's pretty much like a bun. And you just got to think like you can add anything into it, you know? Mm -hmm. And then most of the time it comes out. Right. <laughs> I mean, trial and error, but most of the time it comes out. Right. Yeah. Do you offer any vegetarian or vegan yeah, type so options? Yeah, so I did one, um, one time. Two times, actually. I did one for Eat the Streets, and I did one for a wedding event. Uh, they wanted some kind of ve uh, vegan. Mm. So I did, like, a fried tofu Ooh. Yeah, with, like, an Asian slaw with a sweet and sour kind of sauce. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Sweet chili sauce, yeah. It was oh, pretty great. cool. That's what I was going to ask you next, if you do only your pop-up or if you are available for catering. Yeah, I'm available for catering. Uh, even tomorrow I have one. So oh, okay. I, yeah, it's a drop-off, though. Right. Oh. But, right. So... Because of all the experience I had, I don't only do just bao. Mm -hmm. So even the catering menu, you would see a lot of like Pacific Rim food or oh, okay. yeah, it just you know the range is pretty good. My range is pretty good. Mm -hmm. So it's just not just oh, I just want to eat bao. You know, right. I can make whatever much, you put in the bao. You can yeah, also serve as, as food something or yeah, else. Too. Exactly. Just I can do a bunch of stuff. So it's pretty cool how I learned and then received it. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. With all your training there. Yeah, it's fun. You know, 20 years later. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, you've yeah. put a lot of time and effort into it. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Okay, well, we're going to take a break now, and we will be back with some pictures to show you uh, what you can find at Bowtown. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Welcome back to Think Tech and Adventures in Small Business. Today I have Adrian Tam from Bowtown, and we're going to talk, oh, we're going to actually see some pictures from Bowtown. Okay, so Adrian, tell us what this is. 
So this is our version of a Korean style fried chicken. Ooh. So what I did, I marinated uh, prior to chicken in ginger, soy, sugar, and garlic. Well, that sounds great. Yeah. How long do you marinate it? Well, a good day or yeah? two, yeah, depending. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And then, so that's also uh, the Korean style fried chicken, but mm -hmm. I, I uh, added more stuff. It's updated now. Oh, so okay. what you see there is also mint. Uh, it's a cabbage slaw as well, and there's also basil in there Ooh. on top of that chicken. And then there's also a Korean style sauce I use. Oh, is it yeah, spicy? Yeah, no one's sick. No, it's actually tangy, sweet and tangy. Oh, okay. A little kick, but not too much because you know. Right. I don't want, Not everybody likes yeah, spicy. Correct. But it's really sweet. Once you eat it with everything, uh -huh. you can't even tell the kick is there. Oh, okay. Yeah. And do you offer like do you offer spicy things on the side or any condiments uh, on the so side? What I've also learned is sometimes people like to put sriracha. Uh -huh. So I'll put a little sriracha out for them to do themselves. Oh, okay. Yeah. And oh. then some people like more mayonnaise. But mayonnaise we take care of, but the sriracha, mm -hmm. whatever other stuff, we leave out there for them to do themselves. Oh, all right. Yeah. Because not everybody likes Spicy, spicy. But yes. then there's some that are like, oh, can I get more sauce? And I was like, well, the sauce is the same. Right. It's not so, going to kick it up if you put yeah. more sauce in. So certain things, you know, you adapt and you learn, like, what the customers like. Mm -hmm. So the good thing about also, uh, I use Square oh, besides okay. just cash. So right. it keeps track of everything and what's sold, what's most sold that day. Mm -hmm. um, also, if there's any sort of um, complaints or, uh, like, you know, they would say some kind of comment, you know. Right. So it's good to, to know your customers, to fix it, yeah. you know. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So talking about uh, Square and it'll, it'll follow what your best sellers are. So which one yeah. is your best seller? The chicken. Mm. That's the funniest. That was actually the second because before I thought it was the Tam Tam. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. And then when you went back and looked. Now everybody's like, oh, I want that chicken. And everyone gets it. So I think it's because I, I, I tweaked it maybe three times mm -hmm. and I finally perfected like the what everything goes with it yeah so it's kind of like everybody enjoys that one more oh excellent yeah oh great yeah okay let's see one another picture we have here oh cute so is this your family yeah it's my son and my dad oh and they help did they help at every event or? um well my son is in the mainland now mm -hmm. but my dad is here so he helps a, a lot oh fantastic um, the background you see there i think that is the the um, fisherman's wharf Oh, right. Yeah. Right. Across from near Ward. Yeah. Oh, okay. But they don't have any events. Okay, and then this right. one is at a, it's actually at an old folks home. Oh, okay. In the parking lot. Uh -huh. uh, I think it's the Olo in Hawaii Kai. Oh, but, um, right. A lady that my sister, my sister's classmate was uh -huh. the one doing, you know, those little small craft fairs and stuff like right. that. Right. So, yeah, we did that. And then um, this gentleman had a pit bull. And you can see it says uh, Memphis the Pit. Oh, yes. Yeah, so he had a pit bull walking around, and oh, then cute. he has to take pictures. So this is how our, our setup for outside is when we do one tent. Oh, all right. So you have to condense everything into one. But uh, I learned that even though it might take more work for two tents, mm -hmm. it's easier to separate everything. Oh, okay. It makes it run just like a kitchen. You have your ordering station, and then you have your plate right. up. You know. Right. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And so t uh, tell me a little bit about any kind of assistance you received maybe in starting your business or if you worked with, did you get any kind of funding or? So I, I, there was no funding, no assistance. Uh, everything mm -hmm. I just learned on the whim mm -hmm. uh, through trial and error as well. Um, right. I, I think one of the, not hardest, but there was an obstacle when I actually went to apply for my business name. Mm -hmm. You know, when you first walk in there, you know, I guess, you know. When they, you were registering your business? Yeah. Okay. So I kind of had to, like, ask them if you can help me, you know? Right. So right. Normally they don't. I don't know. It can be challenging sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you it catch them be. on the, I guess, the wrong time and day. <laughs> right. Right. But, uh, you know, right. they were nice enough after I explained myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Once me they out. hear what you're doing. And, yeah. And I think that's the hardest. That's the most, uh, as in, uh, like, a hiccup. Mm-hmm. Just getting it started. But then once I got it started and then I learned everything else, and just kind of just research oh, great. or trial and error again, you know? Sure. Yeah. The true entrepreneurial way. Yeah, I wish it was that. <laughs> I know it is. <laughs> Too kind. <laughs> it definitely is. Okay, so, um, so we like to call that bootstrapping. Yeah, bootstrapping. So you did that all yourself. You funded yourself too? Funded myself too. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So when I first started, um, I was spending a lot of money. Of course. Because I have a red tent. 
mm -hmm. as you can see in the picture before, mm -hmm. uh, and it has my logo on it. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, so it's, it goes all around. It has my handles for my um, Facebook and oh, okay. my Twitter and my Instagram. So it's, right. so it's surrounded. Um, I made it red and black and white because mm -hmm. I just like those colors. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And then, um, so I spent a good money on that. Yes. And my folks are like, oh, you shouldn't be spending money like that. But I was like, ah, you know, when you first start, you got to push the money out. You get right. it back later, you know? Right. So I think within maybe seven or eight months, we mm -hmm. got all the money that, we, that I spent. Mm -hmm. We you got it, it all back. back. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. So it was, it was a... It was scary at some time when you're like, oh, man, we're not busy. But then for yeah. some reason, we'll get super busy. Well, you must have a good product. Yeah. Yes, for so. sure. And so um, what kind of insights do you have for somebody who's wanting to start their own business in uh, maybe in some tips or helping them? I think the first step is really figuring out your concept. Mm -hmm. And then um, if someone else is already doing it, figuring out how to do it better than they're doing it because right. if you're going to do something similar or something the same you, you got to figure out how to do it better because then you know they already have it out so they're already first right but um i would say just do it mm -hmm. don't, don't think about it too much just do it and then everything will fall into play right you know how to differentiate yourself though from yeah. the competition and it's good you know it's good to learn because before i didn't know how to keep track of where my money was going, how it was spent, uh, if I was in the negative after, you know. Mm, right. So it was good, you know. I'm now an accountant, but I learned how to be uh, accounting for my, you know, my business, you know. Right. And yeah. so did you do like an online class or no, how did no you? No, no online class. Just so whatever, I buy, I look at the receipts and I write down what it is, mm -hmm. write down where I got it from. And then for that gig, uh, I would put down, label it, and then at the end, I'll, I'll put profit and loss. You mm -hmm. would. Uh, how much money I made off of the, how much I spent and then go right. from there. You're creating your own. Yeah. So own the spreadsheet. only thing that was hard was when I first started, I only did one gig a month. So right. obviously you're always going to be in a loss because mm -hmm. you're doing one gig a month. Mm -hmm. And if sometimes you have leftover or sometimes you don't sell. So right. what I notice is if you do it every week, two week, mm -hmm. you actually, whatever you might not make uh, on the next event, you make. So oh. it's like, you know, you constantly, if you're doing it every week, Making money. Okay. That's what I noticed. So consistency in yeah. being able to provide your product. Correct. Yeah. Ah. Okay. And then were there any specific surprises that you had in that come to mind in the last three years as you started your business? Um, that I'm still in business. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. But uh yeah. <laughs> so the next step for me is either brick and mortar or food truck. Um, so what I found hard with a food truck, I did buy one. Oh, uh, it was a gigantic one. Oh my gosh! Uh, I had it for about five months. I was mm -hmm. working on it, working on it, and then I just came to realize, like, wow, like, it's a lot of money mm. that I'm pumping into it mm -hmm. um, because it was so big too. And uh, I, I mean, I bought it cheap, mm -hmm. but uh, it was backdated. Oh. So that's you know, it was backdated a while, and whoever had it before didn't take care of it. So I had to fix a lot of stuff. Uh, but good thing is I sold it to a guy in Maui. You can oh. see the truck in Maui. Oh, great! <laughs> yeah. So he did his own thing to it. I got rid of it, and I'm going to go for something smaller instead of, because it was huge. Right. But the good thing is my, my house, where I can park it, mm -hmm. took the whole thing in oh. without blocking the road, nothing. So oh, that I didn't was have to convenient. Pay, yeah, I didn't have to pay for parking. Just parked it at the house. Oh, good for yeah. you. Good it was for good you. shade for the other car. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about food trucks. So where do you see yourself maybe in the next five years then, or your business in the next five years? Uh, I, I see myself, I guess, in the food truck for now. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, like I said, I was looking at brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't found one yet. Right. Uh, could be looking for something affordable. Yeah. And wow. something where wherever it's in town or wherever it's in the place where I want to be, mm -hmm. it's just not uh, feasible at the moment. Right. Uh, so I'm just saving money as I go and see how I can do it. So you know, funding would be good, mm -hmm. but I know I just figure I do it on my own. Yeah. Be more rewarding. Right, so we might see you in a food truck then next. Yeah, for sure. Okay, terrific. And then, let's see, why don't you tell us where we can find you, where we can find Bowtown? Okay, so I have two events coming up. Uh, I have one event this Saturday, mm -hmm. which is uh, the Salt Building. I mean, okay. you can't miss it. It's Right, Kakako. Yeah, Kakako. They're going to take up 
a whole block, like an L-shape. Right. So you're going to see maybe 40 other vendors. Mm -hmm. And they also have um, not food vendors. They have retail vendors as well. Oh, okay. So it's like a giant thing they do. Right. Is yeah. that a night Honol market yeah, or Honolulu a street Honolulu night grinds? market. Oh, Honolulu night market. Yeah. Oh, okay. At and, Salt Kakako. Yeah. And then the week after, uh, on Saturday, mm -hmm. uh, I have an event at the Capilina Homes. Oh. I think it's the old Iroquois. I have okay. a beach. That's going to be held by uh, Eat the Streets. Oh, all righty. So I'll be doing it on that side. Fantastic. So yeah. two weekends in a row. Yeah. And then this Friday, I have a, just a regular. But next, next time when I do the uh, have a Beach one, I also have a wedding gig to go to. So I'm trying to find people to spit off. Oh, okay. Yeah. Two in one day. Yeah. Two oh, that day. can be challenging. And it, it was cool, too, because they wanted, even though it was a wedding, they wanted, like, this. Street, uh, street type of food, you know, like street food. Right. Just nothing, just casual. So oh. it was cool. There's like maybe three more other guys that I know. Uh-huh. So it'll be fun to do events again. Oh, neat. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. That's great. And I want to thank Adrian for signing up for Shop Small Hawaii today. <laughs> thank you. And just remind everybody. Thank you for having me. For all of our small businesses out there to sign up for Shop Small Hawaii. It's a campaign to help support small businesses year-round. And it's also to help promote uh, small businesses via our Instagram and Facebook. And so you just go to Shop Small Hawaii, you register, mm -hmm. it's super easy to do. And then also starting in um, August, August or September, I believe it is, the um, American Express site will start opening for Small Business Saturday recognition, which is the Saturday after Thanksgiving. Nice. And uh, companies or small businesses can go on and choose to be a neighborhood champion, mm -hmm. which is uh, having uh, one business sign up 10 other businesses around them to support an event for Small Business Saturday. Nice. Uh, so that's an exciting thing. And we are also doing a contest, an online contest, uh, that we'll talk more about at another time. Nice. Definitely. But I'd really like to thank Adrian for being here today and talking about Bowtown. Yeah, thank you for having me. Oh, sure. Thank you and so much. And get your free stickers. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that was one last thing I wanted to ask you real quick. So do you run your own social media then too? Yeah, I run okay, everything fantastic. myself. fantastic. Not a ghost. Uh, yeah. yeah, that takes a lot of time. Yeah. A lot of time and effort to stay on top of that. So yeah. good work. Yeah, Definitely. I try. Definitely. Okay, I'd like to thank Think Tech today for having us and... Thank you so much to Adrian once again, and we will see you uh, another partner. We'll see you next week on Adventures in Small Business.